Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, <laughs> Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, Woo-hoo. take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, anything else we find interesting. And man, we found some things interesting this week, Joe Absolutely. Bryant. We sure did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so much we could cover. Just we noticed. can't cover it all. What is that nonsense on your t-shirt? Why would you wear it? What is going oh, on with that? That is our merch. <laughs> <laughs> you shall uh, throwing the chairs. Worry about this. <laughs> throwing the chairs on Linux Gamecast Weekly. <laughs> oh man, uh, you hung out with us last night because you're not going to be able to party with us on Friday. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually going to Disneyland again on Friday. So with my Steve husband, and I'm very excited about that. And uh, we do that monthly as our vacation. And yeah, so playing Trackmania um, also has just been so much fun, Ben. I even won one of the best times on a map on our uh, Friday stream, and I came in fifth, sixth, and seventh place throughout the competition. So for me, that was a big deal coming from from not placing to finally starting to place because I've been thing. working hard at it. It is so <laughs> brilliant. It is fun, and it is a rewarding game if you put the time in it. You go from, man, I just can't get around any yeah. of these tracks to, oh, I finished one to, oh, I'm not last. And this is yeah. the case. It, it's great. <laughs> Joe was having a blast with it last night. I was too. We load the mm-hmm. new maps on Tuesdays to practice until Friday. Then it's serious business because we're competing for free video games on Friday. And uh, yeah, it's one old man Vin's games. And uh, But it was great because Joe was having a good time. She's like, yeah, I got this. Mm-hmm. Then later that evening, I, I, I saw Matthew. He's like, hey, do you play easy tracks? Oh, he's stupid. They're last. And I'm like, because you don't practice, man. Because you don't practice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it has been a fun time watching everyone in our community progress from, you know, this is just an excuse to show up and talk. I'm like, okay, maybe I put some time into this. Get a little better. And uh, it, it's a fun game, especially for elderly people like us. Absolutely. Because it keeps our yeah. brains and our finger digits moving and active. And it's, it's just a good Absolutely. experience to hang out and have some fun. But <laughs> I've been up to a few things up to and including a new OBS Basics video. I try to get one of those out each month and they're always based on feedback, the most common questions I get. So I thought I would do a new one. For multi-track audio recording, if you've ever ran into this, say you were doing a show like what Jill and I are doing right now. Maybe I'm too loud, Jill's too quiet, or Jill's too loud and I'm too quiet. And you go to try to fix that in mm-hmm. Katie in Live or something like that. And you just get that one audio file and trying to adjust the volumes and it never works out right. Wow. Even if you try to get it right, it's never good. So something you can do in OBS is say I'll record Jill on her audio track and I'll record old man me on my audio track. Then when you're in a video editor, you can just adjust the volumes independently. And this also works for recording games, you know, because you want your VO track on one channel, then you want all the game audio on the other. So you can balance that out. Maybe get a part in a game where you mm. want to hear everything. You want it up a little louder. And, you know, you're not sitting there. You're like, oh, I'll just reach over here with my control surface because you've got to be psychopath like me to have stuff like that in your home. Um, you can fix it in post. So look forward to that. I'll put that up for patrons uh, this afternoon. It is already in our Discord in the announcement segment. Because I don't have to log into anything to post anything there. But boom, so I dropped it there last night. And um, what else do we have? Oh, right. French sound card. I'm getting to work oh, on that. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, probably next week or two. Now, now the pressure's on because this is a large company, Digigram. They've been doing broadcast audio stuff for years. I'm like, I'm going to tango with this. Um, Digigram. From Digigram. <laughs> And of course, the Digigram Twitter's like, that's neat. And they retweeted it. I'm like, you're not going to like what I have to say about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned to that. I'll try to put a positive spin on it, but no guarantees. Okay. <laughs> Let's put a positive spin on Slackware. Yay. We were talking in the pre-show. <laughs> Man, yeah, that thing got up. Like, I just did a quick Google search. But it was at the smaller of the distros. It was downloadable, about 24 disk back in the day yes. over dial-up compared to something, you know, you're in the 93, 1995, something like Red Hat. You had to go to the store and get the box copy. Of course, you wanted to do that because I had that application mm-hmm. CD. But a new version of Slackware is out. And do you think these youngins yeah. even know? Yeah, what it, <laughs> what it even is. Oh, it's one of my fa- all-time favorite 
distros as well. So yes, yeah, Slackware, the oldest Linux distro still actively maintained, had a new release. Slackware Linux 15. Woohoo! And we all rejoice because it's been six years since the last Slackware release. Slackware Linux 14.2. And this 15 release has lots of great updates and changes. <laughs> a lot. So much, we're not going to be able to cover it all. I don't know. I got time. So the, go for it. Okay. I'll go so make the some creators. Tea. Okay, <laughs> that sounds good, man. So the creator of Slackware, Patrick Volkerding, updated it to include the Linux 5.15 LTS kernel and support for Pipewire and Wayland. Woohoo! And this release also brings KDE Plasma 5.23.5 as well as KDE Applications 5.81.0. And the option of the latest XFCE desktop, XFCE 4.16. That's pretty sweet to have the latest and greatest <laughs> in Slackware. You gotta, <laughs> so you gotta look at it. This. You gotta be realistic about it. Like 416, didn't that come out two years ago? Shut up. Yes, but it's in there yeah, now. Yeah, that, it's that's still what's good. important. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It was absolutely. kind of interesting to see some of this stuff. Um, it has been updated. Now, they, they spent a lot of time looking for like what kernel they were going to toss into Slack. Mm -hmm. like, a lot of everything. Like, do yeah. we do this and this one? What did they finally decide on? What was it? 515? Um, 5. 5.15. Five, uh, 5 Just 15. Uh, dot two or three. <laughs> Need to look. <laughs> it's the latest LTS version, which makes yeah. me a little sad. I kind of wish that they had held out. Okay. This is complete silly talk because as somebody that runs Debian, we, we don't care what Debian kernel it ships with. We're just going to put it whatever we need in. Same goes for my brothers and sisters running Slackware. I'm like, ah, dude, mm. whatever, whatever you want. But long term, because 516 is going to be the business because it currently is the business, especially with audio stuff. Mm -hmm. However, there's a new thing in there. Make world SH, Joe. That, oh, yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> well, I mean, speaking of like Gentoo and stuff like that, it's a script to rebuild the entire OS from source. Mm -hmm. So if you're over I remember your doing friend, that too back in the day. It's nice to have a, a script to do it. <laughs> it's great. Oh, my gosh. Especially if your friend has a low end <laughs> laptop with Slackware and they're out of the room. Just, yeah, just pull that, you have some just pull time. that up on another VT <laughs> outside of the uh, desktop and pop it back in. Just let them try to figure that one out. That's brilliant. <laughs> I, we're not gonna, I think we both started with Slackware back in the day. Oh, absolutely. Um, I started, uh, I downloaded the 24 floppy disks off my brother's BBS back in 1993. Mm. And it's the distro that got me started on my journey in Linux. So it has it a was very a, special place in my heart. <laughs> I want to say the first Linux I played with, which I don't think was uncommon because it was 93, 94, because I wasn't up and running full time. I, I hadn't transitioned off this hot new operating system called DOS until 95. Uh, oh, okay. And, um, I see. <laughs> yeah. So, I had DOS too, but I was experimenting with Linux. <laughs> I remember the Slack where it was pre point release back in the day but i mean mm -hmm. there were, weren't a lot of options i mean getting the thing bootstrapped and booted forget about getting x up and running that was a whole different weekend project but yeah that was mainly due to hardware support at the time which was effectively non-existent i had a matrix yeah. card and it would, it would kind of work at like 640 by 480 mm. if you didn't mind like the colors completely and we're also talking about <laughs> CRT days where you were punching in like vertical refreshes and stuff like that in DRX or config. It was uh, a dark yes. time. It was a fun time though. It was. it was. The 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 joy of of getting the x86 config, you know, working correctly on your CRT without blowing it up mm -hmm. was a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> it was punching in the wrong thing, starting at and watching your monitor. Go, yeah. You. Like, whoops. Yep. Whoop, 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 whoop. Nope. 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 All right. Let's take another shot of that. Ah. Uh, but yeah. hey, we learned a so lot. So this of is stuff. just. Oh, absolutely. Those early days, you know, re really helped helped us on our Linux journey become proficient. <laughs> and um, I had actually installed Slackware Linux 15 beta 
um, actually two times um, on several machines early in January, and both of them have run fa- flawlessly. So mm. I'm looking forward to putting um, a stable release of 15 on there. <laughs> That'll be very nice. And, uh, oh, they're getting rid of uh, QT4 in this release. So Oh, that's right. We yeah. do you well. <laughs> All right. It's good. This... <laughs> This was I am kind of curious about. You might have noticed, um, if you're in our Discord, this was something I was joking around. What have I been talking about? I'm talking about the new sponsors only repository and, you know, custom amounts and more. Before mm-hmm. we get into this, mm-hmm. I personally take partial responsibility for this thing existing because I wished it into <laughs> existence less than 24 hours before the news announcement because we were talking in Discord. And um, somebody was talking about, like, I don't want to deal with all these bug reports. And I can't read them all. Like, what we need, what we need, Jill, is an only bugs. Kind of like an OnlyFans, yeah. but for bugs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you pay and like, I guarantee you I'll triage. read it. Yeah. Just make it a lot easier. Well, unbeknownst to me, they're working on sponsored only repositories. And is this a horrible thing? If this is a brilliant thing? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Um, what we get is the option for sponsor only repositories. I think this is kind of neat, you know, sponsor only discussions and something kind of like early access that you can get set up now on GitHub. You can even set minimum, minimum custom amounts. You get all your tax info, all that's going to be available. I'm curious to see how this is going to be used because I think of things like Adora yeah. has a business model where they charge for the official binaries, but they only provide support for those official binaries. So, you know, you can download the source and do that. I can see a lot of people taking that business model of, Hey, it's always going to be, you know, just download the repos and compile it yourself. But if you want like officially supported binaries, I could see that becoming a thing. Having an option for sponsor only discussion mm-hmm. could be like only bugs. That thing of like, yeah. if you are a sponsor, you file a bug report. I at least promise you, you will get a response because I don't know where other people are at in their life. But I will say at this point in my life, the most valuable commodity that I possess for me is my time. And mm-hmm. something we were talking about in the pre-show earlier, yeah, is you can cut out a lot of static by saying a quarter a month will get rid of the, I didn't read it, a thing, because you know, if you're about to drop a quarter, you're going to make sure that, have I asked all the right questions? You're probably going to Google something. <laughs> What do yeah. you think, Jill? Is this, this is the end of open source as we know it. It'll never recover. And uh, this is all Microsoft's fault, something, et cetera, et cetera. Bill Gates, brr, I don't know. No, I mean, I think like you, I think this is also can be a good good thing because uh, it, it kind of keeps the people out you don't want as part of the community <laughs> because they have it's to put paywall, some effort Jill. in it and trans- transaction. You're gatekeeping. <laughs> don't you? But too much is not good either. So I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> what we were talking about is um, <clears throat> one thing I learned about having a bar was cover charge. You don't have a cover charge mm-hmm. at a bar, even you get live music or anything like that. If it's a dollar, it's not there to make the extra money. It is there to keep out problem makers I and mean, people who just come in and start smack. Even if it's like when we first started our patron, it let me set it to five cents. I was like, yep, mm-hmm. five cents. That's all. <laughs> Cause that five cents, it worked just as good as a hundred dollars to keep the type yeah. of person who's going to show up and cause problems. Now, the reason this is analogous to hey, people just complain about stuff and just have no issue, real issues other than I want attention or something that's going to completely nuke that. If somebody wants to set up that for private discussions, or if you want to, you know, effectively have paid support. I don't have a problem with that. I 100% mm-hmm. don't. The reason on this monitor over here, the reason this is Mixbus 32C instead of Adore is this has support. And, you know, that's, you don't run out and spend $300 versus free for no reason at all. And I pay for the support, you know, somebody to call and be like, hey, this is broke. I don't have to go post on GitHub and go pretty please. Would you look at my issue? Mm. Having this option, yeah. you could say, all right, you know what? I'm still going to look at all the issues, but I can prioritize this. 
I don't know. Maybe I'm completely in the wrong on this. I'd love to hear your feedback. Send us a note. But I here's where I'm at, Joe. Yeah. I'm just curious to see what people use it for more than anything else. Yeah, same here. And honestly, if they don't like the the GitHub's policies, they can go over to GitLab or you know one of the other repositories. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's optional too, right? Yeah. yeah, it is. Here's what I want to know. I want to know what's Microsoft's cut. Yeah, that's interesting. They're 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 obviously are uh, trying to find a way to monetize uh, <laughs> <laughs> GitHub. So. <laughs> I mean, it is Microsoft, right? It is Microsoft. And <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I can see this being good for some open source projects. I can see. I I, I just want to see what happens. I want to see how it's used. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious because I think something good can come from this. All right. Absolutely. Jill, mm. you use KDE Woo. and the plasmas. Yes, I do. Even though, <laughs> even though this latest version of KDE Plasma has replaced my beloved Kate with Kate Wright. Oh, yeah. Yes. You're this dead to Kate me, Wright. KDE. Yeah. <laughs> ah. So, yeah, KDE Plasma 5.24 has been released with lots of performance improvements and user interface enhan enhancements. In fact, beautiful ones. And... Tons of new features. So much, we're not going to be able to get through them all. So you can go to our link in the show notes and find a really nice article about uh, about all the details of Plasma 5.24. What type of color scheme is this? Gray and uh, pink? See, the, this is some of my favorite things about the new Plasma. What, is is there all the, like are, a, all a the, dial in there where you can just set it on like yeah. 1993 or what? I mean. Yeah. So it's really cool because you can now set a custom accent color and the folder icons now respect whatever accent color you've selected. This is very nice. And honestly, this is something that Windows has had for a while. That's really nice to have on Linux. <laughs> and uh, gosh, there's so many changes that have been done to the stock breeze theme. Um, the focus effect is now easier on the eyes as well. The window effect for opening and closing apps in Plasma 5.24 now uses a scale effect by default rather than the fade effect as before. So it, it seems a little punchier and, and, and poppy. I was really enjoying watching the videos and seeing all those effects and going, ooh, that's pretty. <laughs> and the new version of Plasma also includes a new overview effect where you can press super plus W to access virtual desktops. See K runner results and manage open windows all atop a new newly blurred background. So they're they're all at the forefront, easy to see with a, a nice faded background. And the app launcher has a much cleaner look. In fact, it kind of looks like the Windows app launcher a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but yes, KDE does kind of follow the traditional um, desktop. Uh, like uh, Windows. Well, that's no uh, use. We got to move the UI elements yeah. around all the time. And just you know. Yeah. <laughs> it worked for and Windows. And the desktop 11. icons. Yes, <laughs> well, that's true. Yes, and the desktop icons can now be made twice as large as before, which is nice on on my eyes. I was really enjoying being able to uh, look at that and and see those icons bigger because I always have to increase the icon sizes. So. And that's just some of the visual enhancements. Uh, there's been changes to the Discover Software Manager, including an easy way to manage Flatpak repositories and open install Flatpaks and auto add Flatpak repositories to the system during install. It's something that Discover has needed badly. <laughs> and gosh, there's just so got a bunch many of stuff great in here. The one couple of questions I got is uh, I was reading through the notes and I saw one that said revamped. Maybe maybe some KDE users help me out here. Revamped speaker test sheet in audio settings page. Oh, <laughs> instead of right channel, left channel, right channel. <laughs> um, <laughs> left speaker, right speaker. <laughs> I, I'm just curious as. Because the wording, you know, as somebody who's been accused of being an audio engineer, I don't know what a speaker test sheet is. That yeah, that, <laughs> that is a term I've well, never maybe, heard. 
I know the last time I um, used KDE with my 5.1 surround system, it did correctly detect all the speakers from my sound card to 5.1 and KDE. And that, that was a nice feature. I didn't expect to see that. <laughs> I was just curious. Uh, fingerprint support for the lock screen, that's good. And as I've already mentioned, you replace Kate. Okay, right. I don't know. I, I mean, I yeah. haven't opened Kate in 15 years. So I, yeah. I'm just complaining to complain <laughs> to have some fun. Uh, I know. Yeah. It's interesting. They're it, so much alike. <laughs> so. <laughs> Kate and Kate, right? <laughs> the older I get, the more I use Nano. Uh, yeah. No, no, I still use Vim. I still use XEdit. I still use GEdit. <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, Vim is there, but Emacs is there. But if I'm editing a text file, you see somebody that is just doing some basic you know, bash script and they got Vim open, they got bigger problems than that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a reality. So, yeah, a bunch more in the show notes. Go check that out. We're going to talk about 3D browsers because I don't understand. Mm, yes. We're, we're not the type you think, because when I say 3D browsers, um, some people are thinking like VRML, like, oh, we've tried that 3D in the browsers. That's silly. We don't, it's not going to work. And I, which I completely yeah. agree with. We're talking about a different <laughs> type of 3D browsers. We're talking about a browser for your 3D headset. Now, that's hmm. something you're going to need. It just is, you know, because mozzarella, mozzarella, <laughs> yes, mozzarella, the um, cheese company that also mozzarella. made open source browsers. Mozilla pulled the plug on the Firefox Reality Browser, which a lot of people had attention to because it's an open source uh, browser that you could use with opening XR and mm. your HTC Vive. And having a browser in this beautiful uh, face toaster hugging headset future is going to be kind of important. We want it to be open source, but. It was an open source browser completely designed for augmented reality VR. And I think it was like 2018 for the Oculus, Daydream, remember the Daydream, HTC Vive mm. and all that. So what is this company's <laughs> name, man? A Galileo? Yeah, I, I couldn't Z pronounce it. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, couldn't for, I tried to. <laughs> I-G-A-L-I-A. -A. Well, introducing Wolf. Agalia. They do a lot of open source work and they're just going to pick up where Wolvik left off and they just go down saying, Hey, we're going to keep hammering on this. We're going to keep it up to date and we want you to go check it out and play with it. You know, they plan to release uh, yeah. the latest version on the Oculus app store soon, air quotes. And you know, like VR, not mm -hmm. doesn't matter. I'm not a fan of VR. Uh, I'm not a fan of VR yet. The promise of VR Yes. Yeah, absolutely. The promise, yes. The <laughs> current state, no. Uh-uh. But face huggers don't work for me right now because of my vision issues. <laughs> so, I, I want but, the. Uh, but in the future, it will. I, in the future, that's going to change. <laughs> beam it right in my eye holes. Nothing can go wrong with yeah. that. Shoot some lasers in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. But look at it this way, Jill. When we're old in the home, we'll have a really good browser. <laughs> this is true. Nah. And I like the name Wolvik. They what was really cool is they named it uh because uh Firefox. So so they wanted to name it as part of the the uh um K9 family. So they named it Wolvik. Wow. I thought that was cool. I don't know. Yeah. I thought this cuz Turbo Weasel 9000 was taken. But ah, <laughs> there is that. <laughs> so you got nice. you got a thing for big junky laptops. Oh, yes, I do. So System76 has just released an, a very new high-end AMD-powered laptop called the Kudo. And the Kudo workstation laptop is aimed at content creators, streamers, and gamers. All right, hang on. And <laughs> Place your bets, because Jill's going to tell you all about thing. it. And while she's doing that, I'm going to build one that I would really want. So I want you to place your bets oh. in chat while she's telling you about it. And Okay. <laughs> so it has a 15 thin uh, bezel HD matte display at 144 hertz, AMD Ryzen 9 5900 HX processor, NVIDIA RTX 3060 graphics, up to 64 gigabytes dual channel DDR4 RAM, and up to you can have up to three external displays. And I actually configured one with 64 Ooh. gigs of RAM and a 500 right. gig M.2 MVME at the cost of $2,387. Um, 
I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just being honest here. That two terabyte, <laughs> two terabyte NVMe, four hundred dollars. Yeah. And like, <laughs> maybe if it's a Samsung Pro, but if it's not. <laughs> Well, you could always buy the base unit with that comes with eight gigs of RAM and a two hundred forty gig NVMe well, at one thousand seven ninety nine, and but that that is the base unit. It starts at under two thousand, which is actually quite good for a workstation laptop of this caliber. It's on, honestly that that's comparable to other companies. What and I'm looking at, Jill, all... here's what I'm looking at. I'm looking <laughs> the... at the one terabyte is a hundred dollars. The two terabyte. Is four hundred. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just listen. I'm defending why my price is going to be high because I, if I'm building a notebook, it's going to have two terabyte drive because I'm not dragging external storage. Yeah, you're going to put two. I just figure a laptop like this, I'd be upgrading <laughs> my own storage anyways, and <laughs> or adding you can add more storage to it. So. It's got two slots. Canada warranty, assembly, normal assembly, mm -hmm. recycling. Nope. See, that <laughs> wasn't bad. $2,603. Yeah. <laughs> or $400 less. <laughs> you don't go for that two yeah. terabyte drive option. But but truly, this that is, you know, that's about the price range of a very high-end laptop, like an Asus Republic of Gamers and... You know, workstation class laptop. That's, that's I mean, what you're System pay. 76 has always <laughs> been like reasonably priced if you factor in. That's what I was talking about last week. Cause one thing about System 76 yeah. is you're getting System 76 support. Customer support is awesome. <laughs> that, that you can justify a lot. I don't know if you can justify $400, two terabyte, maybe, but you can justify <laughs> a lot uh, just with the System 76 support. But one thing we always do is grade the Photoshop that no it doesn't uh -huh. matter it doesn't matter if it's system 76 <laughs> it doesn't matter if it's dell there is somewhere a secret meeting of people who compete at these companies to see who can do the worst photoshops of their products <laughs> and put yes. it on the website <laughs> like there's a whole thing you know that meeting takes place right after the meeting of people to see who can make the hardest shaving cream lid on a shaving cream again so this week <laughs> show there we go show us Ben. <laughs> now we're, we're going to open this image in a new time fully appreciate it it doesn't look too bad too bad out of the block but immediately i'm going to come over here and we're going to see some you, you got some jpeg artifacting in this right corner with your uh jpeg you got some jpeg on your jpeg doesn't look too bad if i don't uh you know a little, <laughs> little bit around the top of the laptop monitor. You can say, oh, something's not right. Something's not right. Now. I'm holding off like the fun part because, you know, you, we got power cables. You can see the power cables from the monitor, right? Yeah. Running down? Yeah, you can. Well, the problem <laughs> is, is when you Photoshop the entire table on, power, power yeah. cables didn't make it. <laughs> so this is a little difficult to see. With the way we have things set up, but yeah, there's no um, power cables because the entire table's just kind of been photoshopped. It's floating. <laughs> yeah, somebody had a nice picture of the System 76 warehouse, and they're like, "Hey, that's nice." Hey, somebody go take let's a picture of the table with these things on it, and uh, yeah, let's Aww. cut out the transparencies and bloop. <laughs> what power cables? Yeah. Oh, uh, they're magic. Don't worry hmm, about it. Do I see any legs on that table? No. <laughs> yeah, there's some legs. You know what? I oh, there are. Okay. <laughs> effort went into this, Jill, because even at the front, it looks like they tried to do a little blurring effect to give you like the uh, shift focus. I see. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, right on, right on. Um, a lot of a lot more effort like, here. You you get an yeah. eight eight out of it's ten for well effort done. on this because somebody yeah. tried. This was not lazy. Yeah. This was not lazy. <laughs> not in a little bit. Someone did a good job on that one. <laughs> So let's talk about uh, real quick. We're not going to go into this in depth because we have a gaming show yeah. dedicated to this that we're going to spend 15 or 20 minutes on. But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jill wanted to say her piece on the Steam Deck yes. hardware because everyone got to crack open theirs yeah, absolutely. this week. Absolutely. Yeah. So the, the highest viewed technology YouTubers got the hardware preview of Valve Steam Deck, including Linus Sebastian from Linus Tech Tips and Steve over at Gamers Nexus. 
And they've actually been putting it through its hardware paces, both in performance and doing teardowns and testing the hardware thermals. That was a big one because they were they were impressed that the that the thermals were contained in the the center of the unit so that it wouldn't burn your hands <laughs> when you're playing on it for a long time because <laughs> the the controllers are on the sides so that makes sense and uh, you know they were so impressed with the not only the gaming ability but the thermals and the sound quality and the build of the unit it was it's just it's this is what we needed you know this is what we need for an uh, uh, optimal well if i'm just thrown down looking at it you deck. know yeah considering what it costs <laughs> about 300 bucks to get into the base level you're looking at two to eight hours of uh, battery life unplugged which means you know uh eight mm. hours if you don't use it two hours if you do uh, and uh it's interesting it's interesting yeah i'm not terribly hung up here's what i watched i watched um linus uh, yesterday yeah. I, when I scrubbed through it because I didn't get to catch it live we were doing the Trackmania thing but the only thing that I saw that was going to be problematic is if you need to replace the battery one thing I do want to point out that mm-hmm. SSD do you remember when Valve they did the okay this is what you got to do because we've talked about it a bunch on the Saturday show about replacing you know yeah. if you bought the base unit replacing <laughs> the SSD even the way Valve kind of cut that video made it look like it was going to be really involved difficult yeah it's like 12 <laughs> screws it's 12 screws i mean if you've ever taken apart something with it's a phillips head too no funky bits so good on you Val, for that but yeah this thing like, now you just take this off so easy pedro can do it i'm sure pedro's like oh, yeah <laughs> fine because that's that was his play and i know a lot of people maybe that was your play too like let's get something with you know just the 256 mm-hmm you know, gigs, because you might not have $400 for that two terabyte NVMe. Yeah, (laughs) there is that. (laughs) Yeah, I went for the, I have the middle of the road coming with a 500 gigabyte NVMe. Uh, So I didn't have to get into it, but I know I am going to open it up anyways. I mean, that's just par for the course with us Linux enthusiasts and hardware enthusiasts. I I know plenty of people that use (laughs) Linux that I would not recommend them taking anything apart. Uh, some In people that fact, are just I'm software. surprised they can <laughs> feed themselves. Software. Yeah. <laughs> All I'm saying, not the best metric to judge intelligence on operating system usage. Yeah. <laughs> it's neat. Yeah. It's neat. Uh, plenty of teardown videos. Jill's posted all the uh, YouTube links for all the ones that she's watched. So those would be in the show notes. I'm going to go check those out after the fact. But yeah, mm-hmm. uh, it was fun seeing yeah. some people tear it down. And I'll be more interested. Uh, I was saying before we started recording the Linux stuff, I know how Proton works. Again, I do, I've been doing a Linux gaming show for 10 years. I'm kind of wrong person to be fascinated by Steam Dog. But yeah. <laughs> Conversely, I'm going to be fascinated for the upcoming trying to get Windows 10 or 11 or whatever they try to get running on it. Because <laughs> that's what I want to see. I want to see stuff that I would never do. I'm like, oh, yeah, look, it's yeah. KDE Live. Look, Let's, I can uh, replace that with XFCE. Yay. But. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you get to watch how the Windows users get to complain how unoptimized it is for Windows. I hope it's incredibad <laughs> on Windows for two reasons. A, it's going to force them to use Linux and Proton. More developers got their eyes on the Proton with the games on Linux. This is a just listen. Valve's doing it for themselves, but the benefits for everyone else is awesome. But maybe it's such an atrociously bad Windows experience because we know we got some brothers and sisters out there that bought it. Going, I'm just going to wipe it as soon as I get it. I'm going to put Windows on it. I'm going to have a port. Maybe it's a dumpster fire experience, and that's a bonus <laughs> for us because those things Absolutely. will end up on Craigslist and eBay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At a disco. Absolutely. And here's something we talked about. It was amazing watching a company like Valve implement nigh-perfect anti-scalper technology mm-hmm. to make these available to everyone. Isn't it kind of amazing when a company that wants to prevent scalpers from buying all the products, how how efficiently and easily that can be done? That's something to think about. That's something to think about yeah. next time you're trying to buy a video card from your EVGAs or anybody else uh, or new eggs going, oh, we can't do what you think about. Yeah, you can, but they don't care. It's all about the money, you know. 
That's mm-hmm. product's product. Just get it out the door. Thank you, Valve. Good on you for making yeah. these available to people. And that's what I'm excited about. New toys to play and with in 2022. Half the price. Half the right. price of the competition as well. So, yeah, this, this is huge. Not only is it a, a, an incredible device that people are loving, but it is half half the price <laughs> of the competition. Well, they're doing this to get it out, man. They're selling this. Yeah. I don't. I don't think they're eating anything on this. But at best, they're breaking even on these. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they're not and making Gabe Newell money. even. Yeah, Gabe Newell even said as such with the the three ninety nine version <laughs> that that was yeah he he, he was, they're not getting their uh, full money back on that one. <laughs> they're uh, they're going to get their money back on it because yeah with with sales, but I mean <laughs> right. the cost of we're, production of it was we're yeah. selling you a portable online store from us. Yeah, yeah. there's that. I too. mean, this yeah. was this has been the business model. Well, you know, traditionally for game- Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Game consoles traditionally, um, even to our current yeah. gen, have always been sold at a loss to make up anything else in licensing. True. That's how you get your revenue, except for Nintendo. Nintendo's the one company that figured out how to mix game consoles <laughs> at a profit, which is shown because Nintendo just does whatever Nintendo wants now. You know, there's no fighting between them. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting time. I look forward to, like, Gen 3 Steam Deck. Mm. Yeah, I, see I think what about, like, a... What- the battery life will improve and think about what it's going to yeah, look everything. like. Everything. Like, um, yeah. I, I have better a better screen. Soon as mm-hmm. tablets became a thing, I started buying. I look at some of my first tablets that I was like, this, how does this even work? It's laser thin and it's chalky. Like I can stack up three modern tablets next to them. So I'm thinking about like some razor thin, you know, super slim, mm-hmm. like version three is going to be amazing. Oh, and by the way, don't so. try to play yeah. VR on it don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> no not quite powerful enough <laughs> all right that's gonna then a game i would like you to play if you got a chance is the patreon game that's right i'm going to try to convince you to support what we do because occasionally it's educational we try to be entertaining if that sounds like a brilliant idea head over to patreon.com forward slash linux gamecast we got a bunch of tiers we got some new people we need to thank this week and uh mm-hmm. jill usually drops yeah. this knowledge yeah so we have kraken oh release the kraken i i i love this person's okay. name here's he's your, a new patreon <laughs> here's your, i forget what the original name was but you know when you get in discord you set up your username yeah and the person that I said, saw the name and was like kraken i was in here i was in here because i was i just thought about that and i mm. said in three two because then it just said many people are typing and yeah. I forget if it was Jordan <laughs> or who it was first that dropped the like really the crap. I'm like, there it is. All right. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> that was hilarious. Good job. <laughs> and Nubbin increased his pledge. Thank Aww. you so much, Nubbin. Thank you. He's Nubbin. been one of my favorite people to play Trackmania with and just one of our very active our nicest uh patrons here on LGC. You I enjoy sure his company. that Jill thinks everybody else is mean. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say no. it. That's what you just said. Uh-uh. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. So, uh, yeah, if you can back us like that, that's brilliant. We get a bunch of different tiers. We do extra content. I get some early previews on, like the OBS video that's going to be dropping. It's already in Discord right now. Speaking of Discord, it's, uh, as it was so clearly pointed out, a paywall. I'm We're trying to get those four quarters a week out of you to make us coordinators I, <laughs> but um yeah we do have access to that uh to our discord also for twitch subs same way like that we got irc we've always had irc and irc is tied into discord for live completely free what about matrix fit we don't have one of those sorry uh nothing against matrix it's just like two's enough well three's enough isn't it yeah. Twitch chat discord chat <laughs> irc we have and yeah. it's all linked together <laughs> that's enough <laughs> yes um yeah, that's kind of brilliant. Thanks for letting us do what we get to do. Well, you can head over to linuxgamecast.com if that's not your jam. Maybe share the show. Tell your friends. Tell a cat. We got Amazon wish list. You can end up on this wall back here, but I'm not going to tell you exactly how because you might do it. And uh, yeah, it's been fun. We get to do this. We don't get to hammer you with a bunch of ads on our web zone. You don't need to run ad block on. That's up. Don't have to worry about anything there. All of our downloads for the podcast, no tracking. 
I listen, I got 600 plus gigabytes <laughs> of storage online. So thank you. Each and every one of you. Yeah. It is brilliant. Oh, we love you. Even though Jill thinks everyone except Novin's mean. No. <laughs> Your words, man. I didn't Your mean words. it that way. I didn't mean it that way. I, mean, I love everyone in our community. I included myself <laughs> with that, Jill, so I'm as hurt as everyone else. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> this week will not be made out of cloth. Just regular, yeah. ordinary <laughs> strawberry pie. Yeah. That 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 uh, strawberry pie has lots of numbers on it, coinciding with pie. <laughs> lots of doughy numbers. <laughs> measuring spoons you know i have multiple sets of measuring spoons i don't think i've ever used any of them i'm not a measuring spoon person i'm like oh okay yeah, yeah asking me for a there. recipe is a disaster because i have no idea like i can tell you like that much goes into it how much is that you know that much <laughs> i have to have instructions that's just when I cook, which is rare, very rarely, I have to have instructions. I got to have instruction and it better have a time code on it. De de yeah. de done. Yeah. Dude, I mean, that's like, uh, I don't mess around with baking too much because I find baking personally boring because it's chemistry. Oh, that's what I like the, mo the most is baking, actually, like casseroles and cheese casseroles. Tuna casseroles. Like once you get your temperatures <laughs> figured out, whatever you're cooking in, like if you're if you you able able to, how do you mess that? up? <laughs> That's why I find it. Yeah. Like, okay, let's measure everything out exactly. D -d 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 do the thing. Put oh heat. All right, remove from ta da. Aw, yeah, you like to experiment with your cooking. No, I don't, great. man. <laughs> I, I like to play around. I like to learn stuff. I like to overclock ovens. Yeah. If you're talking to a person overclock. who uses, yeah. Remove the throne so I can make pizzas. I had to get it up ah. over. Uh, oh, but one time you forgot your pizza and it was in the oven for how how long then? No. And it was like crispy. But even when I was <laughs> telling was that story, that was burned. years and years and years ago. I was trying to relate to the audience because, see, Joe, you don't drink. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't drink. I haven't had anything to drink. I'm, I'm on my diet. I'm doing my low carb thing. Um, but. <laughs> So I don't even get to eat pizza anymore. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you, everyone's done this, you come home from the bars. You're hungry. <laughs> and you make a carbon pizza. That is, now, you do, alcohol does not need to be involved in this because I'm fully aware that you're capable of like putting a pizza in the oven, piecing out, maybe going outside, going downstairs. Mm -hmm. Two, three hours later, you're like... Oh, man. And you come back and you got that <laughs> nice little crispy Just block in a it. circle. You're that like, well, that used to be a relatively expensive pizza. Okay. And of course, you're going to see yeah. if you can chisel something. And you're like, no, you can't. It's gone, man. You just got to let it go. Got to let it go. <laughs> you got to spend a lot of hours cleaning your oven. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're going to clean the oven. Not unless it explodes. Maybe. Is a self-cleaning oven? <laughs> Pizzas don't. <laughs> I'll tell you how baking works after the show. Uh <laughs> No, usually I put my pizzas in the oven on a uh, tinfoil. That's that's a kind of a trick. <laughs> yeah. Don't 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 let her near the oven, man. <laughs> he doesn't. Don't do it. <laughs> Actually, currently, just we told her oven isn't even working and it hasn't for the last year. <laughs> and we don't care. I love these kids. They live like college kids. They do. Like let's take it every time with them. We use it's our locked. toaster oven oven because I don't need to usually when we're warming up stuff or cooking stuff, I don't I only need to have to cook for two. So I just need our toaster oven. So I that works finally fine. found a use for my toaster oven. People buy me gifts that they know I will have no use for. It I respect them for that because it's usually in retaliation of me doing the same thing. <laughs> but yeah. one thing was a toaster oven, and I've had a toaster oven for a couple of years. No idea what to do with it. It went ding. It had a physical bell in it. I thought that was amusing once or twice, but then I found out that I could use it to reflow PCBs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. So if you were like that, me and you haven't had a, a toaster I'm, oven laying around. I've tested that. Yes. It's really good. <laughs> uh, for that, it's a lot safer than uh, sticking it in the oven. A lot more power efficient. Kind of like a Raspberry Pi that will now yeah. allow you to install over the network. And this is great, man. Mm -hmm. I saw this. Uh, 
just a whole awesome. bunch of neat from everyone involved in getting this up and running. Cause one of the pains is setting up a new pie is finding that SD card reader, man. That is like step oh, one. That is in my Adder <laughs> fruit cardboard boxes where I keep it these days so I can find it. <laughs> now uh, there's a beta version for raspberry Pi bootloader that implements just straight up network installs. Now this is only going to work for your Pi four or your Pi 400 pop in just an ether noodle into the port, load the Pi imager. It's going to pop up in memory and you're off to the races. All you need to do is install the boot, mm -hmm. uh, beta bootloader. Not a problem. Now, automating this, I think, would be very, very interesting for people who have to, like, schools or labs that have to set up, I don't know, a stack of pies. Yeah, absolutely. Where you can just... For Beowulf cl clusters of pies. <laughs> Kids don't know what that Makes is. life a lot easier. <laughs> oh, what? But I think this is just so sweet that you can, you know, now image a Raspberry Pi over, over a, a classic network. Like you can do with servers and your workstations and just your computers in general. So this is a, definitely an, an evolution for the Raspberry Pi that we've needed. A network boot. That is just so brilliant. Yeah. I think Arthurin, who sent this in and dropped it in our show notes, and like, you know what? This is pretty yeah. dope. I, I'm down with this. I look forward to inventing a little bit of extra time somehow just so I can play it. I don't personally have a use for this, but this is neat enough. Like I need to see this work once then I'll be oh, happy. I will be using it. Yeah. On a Raspberry Pi 400. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be cool. I don't know, man. Do you think <laughs> it'll void your warranty? No. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope not. What would hope not? <laughs> I'm getting around. Hey, we've run a little bit long this week, but we had a lot to talk about and we, we mm -hmm. had to talk about that steam back a little bit don't worry it's not going to become yeah. a gaming show but hey it's cool hardware to play we <laughs> needed to give it a mention so let's cue that music that i was taking so long to find early. oh okay <sighs> well, ben cues the music. what thank you again artharon for you know posting in our show notes and um, giving us some show news ideas it's awesome we love you i don't know i wanted some and... show news not ideas <laughs> show news not ideas <laughs> thank you to our executive producers Aldius Barbrandt Scott M and Foxdog that goes by too quick I can't read them all into Darkwing and Abstraction and our sea monsters can Jack I pause B, these Ronald. I bet I could pause these you might, you might be able to oh I can I, gotta, I just found oh, like, oh, I got it oh death notes there you know what I can, I can also put them we in fast forward yeah <laughs> nova k basil <laughs> good luck See, i can't i can't read all that <laughs> our chairlings we have an awesome group of people Thank we you. have a motley crew a beautiful <laughs> and we got people. mir out there too and he's motley as well <laughs> so i mean Aww. if you're being i polite. love mir pc ppc <laughs> all right everyone we'll see you next week <laughs> okay <laughs>